Patriot Trading Group. Our toll free number eight hundred nine five one zero five nine two. The website at allamericangold.com, and it is Thursday. A bunch of economic data came out today. First quarter GDP, uh, the big highlight, uh, much worse than expected. Uh, we'll bring it all to you. We're still working here in Phoenix through uh, some technical issues, so uh, bear with us as uh, we thought we had it all set up, and, well, just like anything else, in America anymore, uh, you know, it, it, it's harder and harder to get things done. Uh, they have to come back because the, well, apparently they didn't have the right guy out for the job. So uh, we'll, we'll go another day, but we're trying a different way today. We'll see if this goes a, a little better, but uh, we are working on it. And Jason, sooner or later, we'll get this issue resolved. That is right. That is right, Joe. It'll it'll be just fine. And, uh, you know, you, you can't always sound your best every day, I guess, Joe. Once in a while, you, <laughs> you have to go back to the old technology, I guess. Well, right? I mean, it's just frustrating because, really, there's no need for us to have to do this. But uh, the bandwidth that we're paying for, we're not getting. And the answer is, gee, we're sorry. It's just we're doing our best. And and so now we've got to go with another company that has more bandwidth. And, uh, well, we're not off to a great start. <laughs> How about that? But, hey, we'll, we'll get there. They, 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 we, we know what the issue is. We know how to fix the issue. Unfortunately, getting the company to have the right people come and help us uh, has proven a little more difficult. The guy was very, I will say this, very nice. Uh, was like, man, I saw this work order and I thought, oh, this is going to be an easy one. And uh, come to find out he uh, can't do it at all. Boy, oh, boy. Well, you know, when it comes to all this technology, Joe, I think sometimes they, they, they sell the product before they have the capabilities. That's what I think when it comes to all this stuff. <laughs> technology is great until it doesn't work, right? Uh, all that stuff. Matter of fact, we, we got maybe who knows. We may get more into the uh, uh, Elon Musk and Twitter thing. I'm, I'm convinced more than ever uh, that's not going to be what we're hoping for. But the and more, more because uh the, the the government is always way ahead of all the rest of us yes they're yes, for the new branch of government uh the the disinformation police if you will uh it's going to be very interesting all the things that are happening uh but economically today the big number was first quarter gdp now I, of course i told you this was going to be a bad number uh, they were hoping for 1%, uh, it, it, and it came in at negative 1.4%. And, and, of course, we had a big number in the fourth quarter. Uh, but, but, Jason, this is exactly setting up exactly like I told you it was going to be. We are in a stagflationary cycle. The Federal Reserve is raising rates into a very much slowing economy. Uh, and it's going to send shockwaves. People are going to be shocked at what happens. Uh, the Japanese yen hitting a level so low that, you know, I've been here 20 years. And I've never seen the yen this low before. Uh, the yen is now not even, it's not worth a penny. Uh, they're down to about what, about three quarters of a, of, of a cent in falling. Uh, get ready. And this is exactly what Jason and I have been talking about. Uh, the fiat currencies, as we know it, need to go away. There's only one way you can make it go away. you got to have a crisis, right, Jason? That is correct. And if you're in uh, you know, Eastern Europe and Russia and, and uh, suddenly you can't get stuff unless you buy it in rubles, then I guess you don't really need yen anymore, do you? There's a basket of currencies that, that these countries use. Well, I need more rubles or I don't get gas, so well, let's just get rid of the stuff that doesn't work for us. And I guess right now, uh, the yen, right? Yeah, and the, uh, of course, now, uh, we're, Japan and us are very similar. The only difference is, right, Japan doesn't have, I mean, they are part of the basket of currency, so technically 
they're a reserve currency. The problem is nobody uses it outside of Japan. So it, it has really no global use. Uh, they, they used to use it in a carry trade type of a thing, but very high debt, ultra low rates right now, you know, because Japan wasn't a, uh, you know, the reserve currency, they were able to go to negative rates. Uh, their, their central bank, they've done what our central bank has done, right? They, they own all kinds of Japanese debt. They're a little farther along. They are the largest stockholder, if you will, in the Japanese stock market. Uh, and, and they've made the decision. And here's why it's fallen so precipitously. Cause they've made the decision, well, we're just going to live with the inflation and, and not be able to, Raise rates because they know, hey, we, we did all this other stuff. If we start raising rates, we're just basically killing ourselves in a different way. So they're the, they're, they've made the decision so far to let inflation really run. You know, and people don't realize, and you know, I know gold's just below 1900 here, but uh, gold's, gold's skyrocketing in yen, skyrocketing in euros and, and all these other currencies. Uh, it is just a matter of time before it happens here because uh, I think most of us believe the Fed is only going to raise rates until we're in a recession and then they're going to go the other way as well. That, I, I mean, I think that's the biggest thing. We posed that question yesterday. Right? Can they raise rate or lower rates back to zero with inflation running? I think the answer is yes, Japan's proving it. We'll be back. Hey, welcome back here. Patriot Radio News Hour, Joe Jake with Jason Walker, our toll free number 800 951 Uh, we'll get back to the GDP report. We'll, you know, understanding and watching, uh, what, what Japan is doing. I think that is a very good indicator for what all, uh, what I'll call the old guard central banks are going to do, which is we're going to pretend to fight inflation. Uh, until we really can't fight it, and then we're going to live in this stagflationary environment uh, that we've been talking about. Uh, but there is breaking news right now uh, about oil in the EU. Now, this is not gas. This is the oil side. Uh, apparently, the Wall Street Journal is reporting that Germany is now ready to stop buying Russian oil. Uh, so this is a major move. Remember, we talked about, hey, what is Germany going to do? This is going to be uh, the big indicator. Crude oil, which was down, is now back uh, back above $100 a barrel. Uh, if this is the case, when China reopens, we're going to see probably new all-time record highs in oil prices. Uh, remember, right now, China's got about 400 million people on lockdown. Uh, but according to the Wall Street Journal, an embargo now seems imminent. Now, here's the problem in all of this. And this this will, uh, this will is also a problem with, natu- with the gas as well. The refineries that refine the oil for Germany. is, And same thing with the refinery that refines the natural gas for Germany are Russian-owned. Uh, there's a very good possibility. Uh, Rosneft, if I'm saying it right, uh, they own uh, the oil refinery. It, it, usually how this works is, hey, we only refine Russian oil. So if you're not going to uh, buy Russian oil, we're not going to refine it, which would then mean Germany would have to essentially seize control of, of the Russian, re, the Russian-owned refinery. This is what happened the other day. Uh, Germany has now been confirmed has seized control of, of uh, Gazprom, the G- Russian natural gas, of the natural gas facility in Germany, uh, which has now led to uh, Gazprom saying, "Hey, we won't even accept ruble payments for gas." So, Jason, this is a this is a developing story. We're going to have to watch uh, how this plays out. Right now, oil now back up to one hundred and four dollars a barrel uh, as we as we watch this play out. Yeah, we talked about this briefly before the show. What 
what is Germany and Russia going to be doing if they don't if they're not going to take ruble payments from Germany? I mean, it's it's essentially a stalemate. I guess I guess uh, they're going to point fingers at each other for being the cause of this friction, uh, and then I guess it just gets worse, Joe. I mean, if you, if you demand rubles and then they're going to pay in rubles and you don't accept rubles. <laughs> <laughs> Where do you go, Joy? It's uh, well. The reason why Russia doesn't want to accept the ruble payment is, hey, you just seized our property, right? Which is the 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 natural gas, and I don't know what they do with the natural gas, but but uh, if that's got to get refined or or turned into energy somehow, I don't know uh, how that process works. You know, crude oil, we know a little bit more about it. You get the oil, uh, then you turn that oil, you turn it into gasoline, or you turn it into heating oil, or you turn it in uh, to diesel fuel. Uh, but Germany has seized Gazprom's property, uh, which may essentially lead to uh, a, a, a shutdown of natural gas in Germany. It hasn't happened yet, because the payment's not due yet, but... Gazprom is telling Germany, hey, when it is due, we're not taking it. And as soon as that happens, it's going to be shut off. Uh, now, Wall Street Journal reporting uh, that Germany is now relented and says that they will uh, go on an oil, Russian oil embargo, uh, which means it looks likely that Germany's going to have to take over the Russian oil refinery because my guess is Russia's going to say, well, in that case, we're not going to refine the oil. Uh, so, th so this thing again, an another escalation that, at least to me, doesn't appear to be needed. I guess, Joe. The, the way I look at it is, if uh, if I owe you a thousand dollars a month for whatever, and I steal your car, does that mean even though I stole your car, do you don't you still want your thousand dollars a month? <laughs> I mean, that's how I look at it. Am, am I off here? Because I understand, I understand it's a little more complex than that. But I mean, it just seems it just it just seems r ridiculous with the things that are happening today in Europe. Well, and again, they just want the escalation. This is what we've talked about. They want the escalation uh, in this war. And again, uh, I, I, I'm going to focus on Japan. Uh, forcing and, and, and remember, we've got a debt bubble. Period. They printed way too much money. Even the IMF, boy, somebody from the IMF is going to get fired. They actually finally admitted, well, yeah, okay, you got. They printed. We, we, we printed too much money because that's really what inflation is. And I, and I think people think inflation is higher prices. No, that's the that's the symptom of the inflation. What caused the higher prices? is the incredible amount of money printing these central banks did. Uh, and now they're trying to figure out a way to take the liquidity out. But well, when you take the liquidity out, you crush the economies. And already we're saying first quarter GDP, it came in at negative 1.4%. And that's and they're saying that inflation in the first quarter, now we know they're admitting they that we know it's much higher, but they said inflation was over 7%. We had an economic contraction, you know, of almost approaching 10%. Uh, a lot of it had to do with there was a big buildup of inventories. And, of course, the trade deficit just, you know, all that wealth leaving the United States in the first quarter alone. They had almost $400 billion of wealth leaving the United States. And, and I don't know... You know, we knew it was going to be slow. In fairness, uh, I was thinking somewhere between zero and one percent. Uh, I did not think we were going to go negative this early. Uh, and it's going to be very, very interesting that we are starting to see. And as you guys know, and I've said this, I know a lot of business owners in this town. Uh, the bars and restaurants almost uniformly, and I know about half a dozen bar owners in this town and restaurant owners big slowdown in the last 10 days now we'll see if it continues uh but but it's worth pointing out i think phoenix uh in general arizona throw colorado in that florida texas they would be uh i would think faring the best my, my fear is in some of these other states the problem is a lot worse than what they're letting on 
Yeah, I, I agree, Joe. I agree. And, and and you know, everybody's been speaking recession for a while now. Even Janet Yellen and the Fed, you know, Trump, they, they've been kind of, you know, pe- right, talking about we got to get lucky. Yep. There's no luck here, right? There, there's no luck here, and especially with what all they're doing here now. Now, uh, Biden was out today. He wants another thirty-three billion dollars for ukraine and by the way he even and that's just to get us to september so here we go again with the, another sucking sound of debt coming out of the united states in a war that we shouldn't be involved in and really uh don't need to to have this happening and, and where does it end right pretty soon is, is this going to turn into uh you know world war three and trillions and trillions of dollars uh, it's starting to look that way. Yeah, yeah, Joe, and we, we could be here in July and be talking about an uh, you know, official recession, I guess, right? Yeah, yeah, and and again, uh, too early to tell. Uh, the, the, it was a big fourth quarter number, but this was a number uh, that, that I think caught a lot of people, myself included, a little bit off guard. Wall Street is trying to rally, and it's not happening. Yesterday, uh, the Dow barely finished in positive territory. The NASDAQ actually finished lower. Uh, today, they're talking about Facebook earnings. Let me tell you right now. Uh, now, in fairness, Facebook had been clobbered before the earnings. It wasn't great. Matter of fact, it looks like, if you really read through these earnings, it looks like next quarter... Facebook is going to have a Netflix problem where they actually start u- losing uh, users. We'll have to wait and see. Twitter, uh, obviously Elon Musk and all of that. Twitter missed on earnings. And, you know, I wonder if Elon Musk can get a refund. Uh, Twitter uh, <laughs> also admitted to having, I, I, I don't know if it was in the millions, hundreds of thousands or millions of fake users, Jason. That's right. Yeah, there's you know we'll have to watch that, Joe. That is uh, that is definitely a, a situation that is uh, n- not what the mainstream media is reporting. It is it is not simply a yeah. It is mil- okay. I just wanted to clarify. Yeah, Twitter uh, misses revenues. Admits they've overstated millions of users. Uh, so and I'm sure that they had to disclose that to Musk. Uh, when he was looking to, to, to buy it. I know one of my, one of my friends sent me a text and wanted me to thank all the liberals for buying Teslas, which has allowed, uh, Elon Musk, uh, to, to take over Twitter. Uh, we'll, we'll see how that goes, uh, as well because the government, uh, apparently wants to create a new division, Jason. I don't know. Uh, Kevin LaRusso, by the way, if you are not tuning in, uh, to Kevin LaRusso in the morning, I highly suggest you do it. He's really gotten something going there. Uh, and today he was talking about uh, the government wanting to create uh, its own division, if you will, more government oversight and, and kind of be uh, the, the police for what is allowed, what you're allowed to say, what you're not allowed to say, uh, the freedom of speech, Seemingly, Jason, is going to go away, and really, almost all of our freedoms are going to go away when the digital currency gets you. Yeah, we're, we're going to have a lot less uh, ability to be private and, and to do what, as we wish uh, when there's a digital currency. And uh, I, I think, and I don't know, we'll have to see when it happens, Joe, because when the cash is physically gone and the coins are physically gone, that's, that's, that's going to be a scary moment for people that understand what's going on. And uh, they haven't done it yet. So we're, we're, you know, we still have this this little bit of privacy, which is their Federal Reserve notes. Unfortunately, they, it's funny how they hate their own money, Joe. Now is that they can't have anything outside their digital system, and uh, we'll we'll see. But you're right, freedom freedom is on the clock, so to speak, uh, when we go to a digital currency. Yeah, and and, and you know we've talked about ESG scores. Uh, that is already happening. Remember that goes into effect. In at the uh, the beginning, I want to say it's either the beginning or the end of December, uh, where every publicly traded company uh, needs to come out and report, uh, you know, essentially their their ESG scores, and it's just a matter of time uh, before uh, really all 
all of us are on some form of social credit score. I guess we should have known. Remember that was a thing uh, going into COVID uh, where we were all oh, the Chinese and they're, they're such evil doers in their social credit scores. Uh, it really, we're on the same path. I, I think you're right, Joe. I think you're right. And, you know, I, I find it interesting uh, as, as uh, the Ukraine war has is, is, uh, created this situation that uh, Biden and Europeans, you know, they, they seem to want to really push the Green New Deal even further, Joe. And why I get this feeling that we're going to have two different worlds. We're going to have the East, you know, the, the Chinese and Russian world where they use gas, and they're going to try to push us into, you know, solar energy, green energy, you know, wind energy, and and, uh, and and they're going to spend trillions upon trillions upon trillions of dollars to put this this competing system in place. And if we don't use oil, let's just say they somehow get us in the future to, to not use oil at all, it makes oil prices, uh, you know, and, and the green uh, energy about the same price, Joe. And, and why do I get the feeling? Oh, my gosh. Let me tell you. And that price is a lot higher than where it is today. Yep. The only way they can make it work. We'll be back right after the break. Welcome back. Welcome back to your Patriot <laughs> Radio News Hour, Joe and Jason. And and I, I've just I've got a lot of stuff going on right now. Right now, the Dow is up 160 points, but is it really? Well, I guess, yeah, yes, obviously the Dow is up that. Here's the internals. I, we did this uh, really quickly yesterday when I noticed it yesterday on the half-empty cup. Uh, stocks hitting a new... 52-week high. This is a, a number from today. 41. Stocks hitting a new 52-week low right now. And the number goes up almost every two or three minutes. This number keeps going up. Right now, it's at 1,200. So 41 stocks hitting new 52-week highs. 1,200 stocks hitting new uh, 52 week lows, and, and of course we've been telling you about the uh, uh, about really you know Wall Street really is crashing even more than it appears to be, uh, and the internals here held on by a few uh, a few stocks doing all of the heavy lifting. It's just a matter of time, uh, and it's been you know Wall Street's looking very very weak here, uh, and I think we're getting ready for another 10 to 20 percent leg down. Uh, be, and, and then we'll see what happens then. There, there is a real possibility here. We could see Wall Street uh, back below 20,000, Jason. Yeah, and well, and, and I think a lot of it has to do, Joe, with the inflation. I mean, a year ago, uh, April 30th, uh, the Dow was 33,874, so essentially just a couple hundred points up from where it is today. And the last few months, and as far as I'm concerned, Joe, and we've talked about it, I think the inflation, the actual inflation is 20%, especially the last bunch of months. That's a bear, to me, that's a bear market. It's just, we don't have, we, you know, the, since the, the late 70s and, and the early 80s, we haven't had inflation numbers that were big. And so there's nothing to compare what is going on here. So if you have a flat market and 20% inflation, that's a bear market for a whole year. This is a crash. I think. Yeah, and, and really, the Dow is the best of the three. The S and P yes. is worse. The Nasdaq's even even more, uh, you know, significantly below that as well. To and you're right about that. There's no doubt about it. Uh, and, and again, I'm watching Japan very, very closely. Uh, as their central bank has made the decision, hey, we, we don't, there's no good choice here, right? We can fight inflation and crush everything, or we can leave and let inflation run wild and essentially keep printing money. And that has been the decision they have made. Everybody and their mother is coming out on, on TV. Now, if you turn on the idiot box, which I try not to do, they're all saying the same thing. The Fed's going to raise rates until they break it, and then they're going right back to zero, right back to quantitative easing, which essentially is, hey, we're going to go Japan, and look how significantly their currency took a hit. Uh, you know, you're, you're talking about... Uh, the Japanese currency losing 25, 30% of its value because of that policy. Uh, 
Uh, I think that's what's in store for us. And, of course, when that happens, it makes the inflation problem even worse, Jason. Right. And remember, the last couple of years, uh, the the Japanese uh, government or the Japanese central bank, which is the Japanese central bank, has been buying their stock market to, 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 to prop all this up. Uh, and that's where our our central bank and other central banks are going to be going as, as they try to keep propping things up. And, Joe, before the break, I was making the – the, uh, the 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 observation of the green energy that they're pushing in this in this country in the western uh, the western uh, countries of Europe, I it's it seems so eerily similar to the space race and the arms race to bankrupt Russia. There should have been no race to space. That, that Russia should not have been trying to get to the moon and spend all that money. Russia should not have been building ten times the nukes as as America was building. Uh, the Federal Reserve, the central banks, which couldn't quite control Russia, just bankrupted them into, into controlling them. Why does it feel like uh, America is, is maybe losing? You know, maybe they're losing control. I don't. I don't know what the situation is for sure, Joe. But doesn't it seem like the rush to green energy is a way to uh, very quickly bankrupt this country and into submission, change the world reserve currency to whatever you're going to change it to, and America becomes Japan or uh, England, right? Well, I, and again, I think this is going to be a situation where, and I don't want to overstate, listen, the dollar, you know, it's going away. That That is a fact. We all have to accept it. Uh, the ability to pay with cash is coming to an end. The the, the issue, this situation is it's going to happen much sooner than I was warning about. You know, uh, two years ago, I was telling you, we probably got to 2030. You know that, that that was what I thought. Uh, I don't. I don't think we, we. I'm not sure we get out of this administration. I will say this: if it's not the Biden administration, and I'm making an assumption Biden doesn't get real, it's either the this presidential cycle we're in right now, or whoever gets elected to be the next president. This is when it's going to happen. Uh, Leo Le- Brainard, right? She has just been confirmed. She's the number two. She's going to take over at the Fed, and I think that's that's how this is going to come into play. Uh, she is a, an incredible, you know, her and Janet Yellen very closely aligned, extremely liberal. Uh, we're not only are we going to have, uh, obviously, we're going to be fighting the next Great Depression uh, at the same time, uh, a an a massive inflationary cycle to go along with the dollar stepping back. You know, how far it steps back remains to be seen, right? Because I think uh, the yen's going away completely, uh, right? The euro, we'll see what happens to them. But the the, the U.S. dollar, which has had a huge surge here, uh, this surge doesn't last very long. And then I think the big correction comes. Uh, and then ultimately, at the end of the day, it's everything else that goes with it. How much of your money are you going to be able to keep? How much yeah. of your money in the bank are you going to be able to keep? I think the money that's in your, your Wall Street accounts, if you have it in the wrong places, uh, that's going to take, get taken care of on its own, right? Uh, with, you know, Wall Street, uh, you know, Dow 36,000 to say, let's call it Dow 18,000. Well, that just took care of, of your 401ks and IRAs, especially if you don't have it in the right places. And then it's the bank accounts. Uh, I think there's going to be social credit score credits. Uh, if you've got the, you know, the right minorities, maybe you get a little bonus. Uh, all you really poor people, hey, they'll, they'll probably give you, you know, who knows, an extra $500 to go along with it, something, you know, they'll, they'll be able to drive. Probably 50, 60, 70 million. Really? We're at the break already. I'll I'll finish that thought when we get back. 800-951-0592. Patriot Radio News Hour. Joe and Jason here. Colts uh, up a little bit here. 1890. Kind of getting its sea legs here as the dollar has been red hot. uh, Mostly on uh, the, the Japanese yen. Uh, falling apart here. We've got uh, next week, uh, May 4th, uh, that is the, the, well, I guess the next week, the week after, uh, we've got the Fed meeting uh, where we're going to get the the 50 basis point rate hike. 
and then you know Jay Powell will be interesting because uh, he always tries to be as dovish as possible. This one's going to be a tougher one for him to pull off, so we'll see how that goes. Uh, Silver's actually still Silver's down again, twenty three ten right now on Silver, uh, and and really interesting because uh, Silver, be, as as everybody knows, is you know. I don't want to say next to impossible to get. We we finally had a few sellers uh, come in and, and alleviate some of it. But Jason, uh, this is a, a a market that I think when you look at gold and silver, they always go first. This really tells me I think the next leg, the next move on Wall Street is going to be lower uh, because. Uh, when we start looking at the, what the alternatives are, there's not very many good options here. It looks like they, they've chosen the, the we're going to keep the inflationary cycle going. Germany now saying, okay, we're going to stop buying Russian oil. I told you about the natural gas situation here. Uh, and again, China still has almost 400 million people on lockdown. The the ramifications of that are going to be significant. I don't know if you saw the news about Raytheon saying, hey, we can't build uh, Stinger missiles because uh, we don't have the products, and a lot of the products used in those missiles, uh, the Chinese were the ones that built them, and they've stopped building them, so we've got to redesign, and it may not be until 2024 until we're able to start supplying them again. I mean, these are things that, that nobody talks about. That's correct, Joe. That's correct. Uh, you know, gold is still up year over year from where we're at as the stock market goes sideways. Oh, gosh, yeah. So, yeah, so, 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 by so, a so large market. Gold coming down the last few days, uh, to me, it's just it's not it's a non-issue, uh, you know, and I, and I don't buy gold to, to worry about uh, what it's going to do week to week or month to month. It's it's about buying and holding. It's about savings. But, Joe, I, uh, I didn't get a chance to jump in but based, uh, from the last segment, but in times of war, and that's what we're headed for, and in some quasi-version of this situation, there's going to be a war that, that America's going to be involved in. Obviously, they're going to make it worse over there. Uh, the uh, the Pentagon told Congress on on March first uh, for the uh, State of the Union address for Biden that uh, hey this is ten to twenty years, so in a time of war, things that were unacceptable become acceptable. Number one, economically, inflation is acceptable in times of war. And uh, Brian, uh, Joe, the reason I was bringing in that green energy uh, situation as being uh, where the economics of this is going is that, you know, they, they've mentioned this before, Joe. Have you seen this thing where uh, the, uh, to, to get the green, uh, the green grid up and running in America and, and other places, $150 trillion over 30 years, something like that. Yeah, and S Biden talked about that again today with his $6 trillion a year. Six billion trillion dollars for Ukraine. $6 trillion a year, Joe. That's what they want to do to put the, – it sure sounds like the space race and the arms race, Joe. It sure sounds like we're playing the part of Russia this time. It, it, no, no problem, right? And, and, again, to Jason's point, think about this in March. We started with $400 million for Ukraine. Then it was a billion. Then we gave them $3 billion. Now he's saying $33 billion. You know, that, that next up it's $100 billion, then it's a trillion – Right, and, and as Jason said, war is always a good reason for inflation. But going back, listen, it's a done deal. It's happening. Either you're going to prepare or you're not. A digital currency is coming. The, 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 the big bubble that's been created is, is crashing. Here, look at the internals I just gave you. 1,200 new 52-week lows, 40 new 52-week highs. It was the same thing yesterday. It was the same thing the day before, uh, and, and it's going to continue. But think about it. Think about how many people are on food stamps. And by the way, uh, over the next six months, we're going to see another big jump on that. I think we'll have uh, like 50 million people on food stamps. Think about the number of you that are already collecting Social Security. right? So you, you don't have a lot of tools in your arsenal. So when they come out and say, oh, yeah, we're going to give you an extra 500 credits, right? You're going to be like, yeah, let's do it. Heck, yeah, I need those extra credits, right? So you've got a huge part of the population already 
knowing, hey, you need our handouts. You need this government handout, and and this is how we're going to get it done. And it's for the rest of you that have money in your bank accounts, that have that money in, 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 in the stock market and in, in, in the money markets and all these other things. Remember, uh, too big to fail. See, it sounded real, real good. And this is the problem with the the government being in charge of what is or what isn't misinformation. That that bill essentially put all of us on the hook, and and this is what's going to happen. And, and Jason, most people don't know it. Most people don't want to believe it. Most people want to say I'm just just making it up or lying to you. It's the facts. You are going to take the biggest bite of it all. Uh, and remember uh, that the banks needed to get bailed out. And when they need to get bailed out again, this time you're the ones, we're the ones that are going to be doing the bailing. So uh, if you got money in that bank, I wouldn't be real, real happy with it. Keep what you need in there, but I wouldn't be keeping more than that, Jason. Totally agree, totally agree, you know. Gold and silver, it's the way you you keep your assets safe, keep your hard-earned money safe. 800-951-0592. Buy when everybody else isn't buying. People aren't buying as much as they were a month ago. Maybe a great time to jump in. 800-951-0592. Patriot Radio News Hour. Uh, Joe and Jason here on on this Thursday. And, And I think really for the next, Let's say 90 days. I think we're going to be uh, living in a delusionary time where somehow they think the Fed's going to be able to raise rates just enough. Uh, they, they're already, Jason, they're already doing the, well, we don't have to go back to 2% inflation, right? But, but you know, if, inflation, if it'll just cool off a little bit, they're going to try to call this a win, uh, and I and it's just not going to happen. I don't think it's in the cards here. Uh, it's going to be a wild, wild setup, but the end is clear. Uh, Japan is letting you know what the end is. Europe's letting you know what the end is. Jason was telling you they're going to make sure uh, that the new digital currencies are coming. There's going to be a great global reset. There's going to be a huge emphasis that we can no longer rely on fossil fuels. Look at Russia. We can't rely on them. Uh, Venezuela, the Middle East, uh, the evildoers, China, and this huge push into the uh, ESG and social credit scores and wind and solar. Uh, And, again, that's just going to be uh, everyone's going to have to pay so much more for everything and why the digital dollar is going to have the success I think it's going to have is because of the fact they're going to promise the, the poor of the, the poorest of the poor, which is going to be half of the country. Hey, we're going to give you more than what you need, right? More than what you should. We're going to give you a bonus. And I think this is how they're going to get it in, Jason. It'll actually be easy. Most of the country will be begging for the solution, which they're going to say is this digital currency. Yeah, that's that's very well put. That's that's exactly how I would have put it. And uh, like I said, Joe, times of war, right? And uh, why do I feel like uh, Russia demands payment in rubles? Germany says, here's your rubles. Russia says, no, we're not going to. Why, why is that nonsense just uh, uh, the excuse for, for uh, escalation, Joe? And uh, we know we're, we're going to be watching Finland. We're going to be watching what's going to happen in October. Is, is China going to go? take down Taiwan, all these things are going to frighten the people uh, of the civilized, industrious nations, and uh, you're right, people will be begging for anything that uh, makes uh, safety sound like it's on the horizon, right? Right, exactly, and I'm just uh, uh, watching some breaking news here. The Guardian, this is through Zero Hedge, is reporting uh, that since the invasion, Russian revenue for oil, gas, and coal exports uh, has come in at $62 billion, uh, and they said the, the two months prior, so they said the, the, the war now has been going on for about two months. The, the two months prior to the war, that number was $44 billion. 
so Russia, and obviously the price has jumped, uh, and I think this is re- really what they're trying to do here and forcing countries like Germany uh, to say, okay, we, we've got to stop buying it because, you know, based on the numbers, hey, Russia's raking it in right now. Russia is, uh, their currency seems to be doing uh, uh, quite well, Joe, uh, after uh, the uh, the so-called attempt of, of crushing their economy, right, Joe? And, uh, and when you deal with commodities... Uh, in a, in a wacky uh, economic world, Joe, commodities can, uh, can can you can stand very strongly on those things, right? Well, that just tells you that's the new target, right? We've got to get away from oil. We got to get away from natural gas, and we're going to pay a lot. Eight hundred nine five one zero five nine two. 